Hi everybody. Welcome to Central Idaho. Right along the road and you're looking at Belt Supergroup Rock. 1.4 billion year old bedrock. I'm right along US 93 driving north from Ennis up to the town of Salmon. The Pissimeroi River is coming in from the right here and I'm um, following along with Roadside Geology of Idaho, Paul Link, who I just visited with last night, and others, and wonderful illustrations by Chelsea Feeney, who I do not know. Here's why I decided to stop. We are right here where the Pissimeroi is coming in to the salmon. And if we look carefully, there's some Y, some bedrock labeled Y. And the Y is meadow proterozoic metasedimentary rocks of the Lemhi's subbasin of the belt basin. Basically, there's are the Precambrian bedrock units of the belt supergroup that are showing up here in the Lemhi region. So I'm really at ground zero for detrital zircons that some, like Paul Link and Brian Mahoney, argue is the source of the Precambrian zircon grains in the Nanaimo, let's say, uh, up in Washington and British Columbia. But let's not get sidetracked. I'm here to look at the Apple Creek formation and maybe some of the Lawson Creek formation. And let's just go right to what Paul is telling us. Uh, I'm in the section of this book where we're driving from Chalice, the town of Chalice. By the way, um, I just drove through Chalice. I didn't get this clear view like we have in the photo. But I'm realizing that all of the Chalice volcanics of this area have amazing exposures that we don't have in central Washington. So there's mapped calderas that I guess I didn't quite realize were mapped like this so visibly. And so basically I need to come back here and really get a good sense of what uh, large scale exposure of the chalice magmas look like without a bunch of cover like the flood basalts in the Pacific Northwest. I think really learning the details of this area around Chalice, Idaho will help me uh, ultimately understand formations like the Tianaway Formation and others up in my neck of the woods in central Washington. Again, I'm getting sidetracked. So I'm at Ellis. I mean, there's Ellis, an old gas station that no longer exists and an old post office that I'm not sure is still working. But what does Paul tell us? On the east side of the Pissimeroi Junction, that's where we are, bedding plains of the Apple Creek formation of the Lemhi Group dip steeply westward toward the road, and you can see ripple marks on the rock surfaces. These sediments were deposited in and at the edge of a shallow island, inland sea, or huge lake in the Belt Basin, 1.4 billion years ago. Depositional features such as mud cracks and ripple marks are well preserved in these rocks because land plants did not yet exist. High rates of erosion on the vegetationless land caused high rates of sedimentation in the basins, covering up and preserving depositional features. Plus, there were no worms or other creatures to stir up the sediment. You can see more belt rock for several miles north. Well, I'm not going to stop every uh, three miles. You know, I got to get home eventually, but I thought that we would just kind of go over there together. I got my uh, hammer. We can take a peek at the Salmon River if you like. I'm going to try to do this all in one take. The Ellis Post Office. <laughs> so it's Labor Day weekend, the Sunday of Labor Day weekend, and uh, not a whole lot of traffic, really. So how can I get over there easily? Oh, I see a private property sign already right over there. Um, 
and I got my Birkenstock sandals, so I guess I'm not interested in going crazy over there, but um, I don't know. Let's see what we can find. The Pissimeroi River entering in to the Salmon River. On a hazy Labor Day weekend. So the Belt Supergroup was discussed. Oh God, I see ripple marks from here for crying out loud. Wow. The Belt Supergroup was discussed in my backyard last fall, almost a year ago. Uh, I think I started about September, early September last year. Exotic Terrain A, Exotic Terrain B, they're all still there on YouTube. And uh, I was establishing with you all, if you watch those or were with us, I was establishing that we had this long-lived western margin of North America, uh, uh, which was uh, which we know about that western margin by studying these thick section of belt supergroup rocks. So you you don't have to look very hard. My God, are you kidding me? Look at these mud cracks. What the hell? Are you serious? So you may know these bedrock layers of the belt, again, 1.4 billion years ago. You might know them from Glacier National Park, let's say, or exposed along Interstate 90 up by Missoula, Montana. Ah, this, that's the stuff we're talking about. Oh my God. Now, I thought I just saw a oh. I mean, there's the true bedding planes dipping maybe 45 degrees to the west. And I guess I'm not equipped to scamper up that face. Where did I think I saw? Yeah, I saw ripple marks down here. Here. Can you imagine a a tidal mud pool before plants were invented? You know what I mean. And having those delicate tidal pool features preserved for more than one billion years. I mean, at some point, just the, the awe of the time that we're talking about uh, catches you every once in a while. Even if you think about geology every day, you can spend your whole career in geology and not really know what a billion of anything is. Okay, now I'm a little paralyzed. Don't really know where to go. Um, well, hopefully we got somebody joining me over there. Going backwards. Um, hopefully not reaching for a rifle. I'm in a government car, you know. Holy cow. Yep. I'm standing on ripple marks right here. Well, I got a hammer. I guess I should uh, show you what the inside of some of this. I guess this is, you know, the, it's always tricky with the belt, I think. Like, it's, it's on the verge between the original sedimentary layers and the metamorphic equivalents. So quite often you see the belt supergroup described as a meta sandstone or a meta shale. Like, it's not really a... 
So just that sound, I mean, I guess without any context, I'd, I'd call this a slate. We're bordering on a phyllite. Can I zoom for you? Just a little flaky flex. Some foliation developed. But, you know, I can... I can look at the belt anywhere, I guess. I, the part where we have these delicate features. Did I just luck out? Did I just luck out and uh, stumble on mud cracks and that's the only mud cracks that are here? Oh no, I suppose these are. Are they? <laughs> they have to be. You see these polygons? I mean, I don't know how else to explain the polygons. Remember, this is this is rock that was originally flat. It's been tipped. This is back when the shoreline was here. But think how much stuff has been completely obliterated since it was, uh, especially delicate features, since they were created e even five million years ago, one million years ago. This is some of the oldest rock in North America and it's got the most delicate preservation? That's crazy. Oh boy, I think I see more. So I've already showed you, let's see. What I thought were for sure mud cracks. Now I'm kind of showing some polygons that I don't know how confident I am, but this face looks interesting over here. And as I'm filming this whole thing in one take, you're probably going, Yeah, you just missed a bunch of stuff. You just walked over like some of the best stuff. I probably did. I'm just trying not to fall. <laughs> Oh gosh. Belt Supergroup. We have some of this in northeastern Washington, but not much. And as soon as we get a little bit further west, we're into the exotic terrains that were accreted starting 170 million years ago. I guess I'm really looking before I sign off for some dynamite ripple marks. I mean, we've already seen some. Well, I'm sure Idaho State University students have been here in geology, maybe other geology groups. Maybe you've been here. Maybe you know about this spot. Just the accessibility of it. I mean, you can mail a postcard, get some gas back in the day, and then come over here and uh, fondle some ripple marks and be a much richer person for it. Okay, coming back, uh, I'm, I'm going to look specifically for blocks that have ripple marks on them because I think I mean there's some ripply nature to this but it's not quite as again I'm getting real greedy now I'd like to get some real good ridges on a ruffles potato chip for you on an individual block and you let me know if you see one haha -ha. Right above the Pissimaroi River. You're like, come on, buddy. Do you really have to do it in one take? Do you really have to do it in one take? Oh, I think I do. I think, I think there's kind of a power... Wrong word. I think there's kind of a nice... Oh, boy. I got to look at those mud cracks again. <laughs> I didn't know I said I was going to look at ripple marks. God dang. 
I hope it shows up as well for you as it does for me standing right here. And if you're in the area, this is worth a stop, I would say. Forgot what I was saying. Oh, one take. Yeah, I, I just think the part where the, the whole goal of these, if it hasn't been clear to you, or I guess what I'm evolving into with the style out here filming is, is trying to get as close to true as the experience of just being out here with me, I guess. Like, we're just piling out of the car, we're reading a little bit in the back of the car, and we're like, let's go over and take a look. I mean, from all of my days in geology, that's kind of the experience. Or instead of a roadside book, you've got a map or you've got a report or something else. But quite often you just, you know, get tipped off to a particular milepost marker or an intersection like this. And then you, you just go over and take a look. And maybe you're not excited and you move on. Or maybe you are excited and you stay for half a day. I don't think I'm staying for half a day, but for such a humble little outcrop that most people are driving right by, there's quite a bit to offer here. I'm at the 16 minute mark. Is this going to be a 16 minute video? Am I about to cut this thing off? Maybe. I can't, I can't deal with that face. This one's a little less harsh, so maybe I'll... I don't know why, but maybe I'll go up on it a little bit in my bare feet. I'll probably burn the bottom of my feet. Nah, there's no reason. That's the, that's the same dip, but of course it's the same dip. Let's finish where we started with those first ripple marks, which maybe were the best. Oh no, it was these mud cracks. Right, I saw that same that same pattern so that this this guy is a slab of of that former surface and then the ripple marks yeah those are good much of this of course is how you catch the light Dancing water from 1.4 million years ago. Are you a bottle cap collector? What vintage and what brewery are we talking about here? I'll leave this for you. Looks like a fossil. It's not. Okay, thank you Paul and co-authors for a nice little experience here. The Belt Supergroup 1.4 billion years ago. Thanks everybody. I love you and goodbye.